Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Wagner. I am yours truly, Dr. Truett Wagner. And as you can see, I am not dissatisfied this evening with my panel. I have uh, put together a very diverse, very beautiful collection of mm -hmm. women who are successful, smart, articulate, and just happen to be disabled. Okay? So, and that's what we're gonna talk about. The theme of this evening is beauty. So, uh, let's go around, say who we are quickly, and then let's jump right into this discussion that I am super excited about. How you doing, Erin? I'm doing good, Dr. T. Hi, I'm Erin Kay. I'm one of the co-founders of Claiming Disability Incorporated. We are an organization working to empower, educate, and advocate for people with disabilities. We believe in media projects such as this, created by people with disabilities, for people with disabilities. We believe that you can wear your disability like a badge of honor, and it's not a bad thing. Um, what Dr. T is trying to do with beauty and breaking down those stigmas, you can be disabled, beautiful and fierce, and that's what we are all about. My partner, Molly, is <laughs> on the left to me, and she'll introduce yourself. <laughs> you know what, Erin? We let you go out of line now. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in, Molly, just quickly, and then let's go to DJ. Yeah, hi, Thank everybody. Thank you, Erin, for us <laughs> messing us up. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi, everybody. My name is Molly, like my partner in crime, Erin, said. I am the other co-founder of Claiming Disability Incorporated. Um, I am so excited to be here this evening. I am a total girly girl. I've always been into fashion and makeup and all of that and uh, pop culture and following along with celebrities and all of that. Uh, and and I, I just love the discussion of disability being included in mainstream uh, pop culture. I think it's really important for representation and then also that huge awareness piece. Hello, Kay, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is KJ and I'm from the city of, the city of University of New York. Oh. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome. Hello, Damara. So good to see you again. Hi, um, my name is Amaris, and I'm just happy. I'm tired, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, Demaris actually is the only student who is, that actually was on my campus that is regularly on the show. And Demaris is being modest. She does quite a bit of modeling here in New York City. Okay, Janera, what's up? Hi, everyone. I'm Janera Obregon, and I'm from New York. I am... Um, I'm a former New York Miss Amazing um, Queen for two different years. This year, I got the opportunity to be a judge, which was um, like wonderful because I got to see uh, from a different perspective the what people, um, young girls with disability have to offer. Um, I'm also a model, and I enjoy doing it. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> always, always glad to have you, uh, Janara. Yes, Janara and I have been on some great shoots together, so that's good. Hello. Well, uh, hi, um, I'm Dania Manderson. I am, um, let's see, 40 year old mother of a 14 year old daughter, and I'm a full time public school student uh, teacher. And I was Miss Wheelchair in New York 2017. Woo! Um, wow. Nice. So, lady, first question What do we think about this sudden visibility of? disabled models in fashion I, I yeah i can i can start if you'd like um yes. Thank i you. think i think what i'm seeing now is is the surge in people with disabilities being represented and um it's very exciting it's a very exciting time yes. when i was in my 20s and you know the 1920s 25 i you know i had aspirations of being in the fashion industry, but it there were so many barriers. There were no, there was no. Um, mm -hmm. I had, I didn't see a way in to the fashion world, and um, that was pretty disheartening. On um, what I'm seeing now, it's very inspiring. Um, but I do wonder, and that might just be the, the skeptic in me, 
I do wonder if it's just a tokenism syndrome or, you know, some form of like affirmative action to kind of take the spotlight off. And I just wonder about that because I feel as if there's still not an influx. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I mean, I understand what you're saying in terms of the tokenism, like that potentially, you know, we're just there for that affirmative action piece. Oh, we probably need a disabled person on the runway. But like Dr. True was talking about with people like Julian Marcato and Lolo Spencer, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them, but they're pretty big in the fashion yeah. industry. They have contracts that, you know, aren't specifically created around their disability, but just general modeling contracts. I don't know about y'all, but when I saw that Target commercial back in like 2014, I cried. Like Julian Marcato was like rocking it out. And I grew up in the 90s. I didn't have any representation of any kind, not especially not disabled models. Right. So it was super cool to see. I love seeing that representation all over. But I think we need to be mindful. There are different types of representation. There are lots and lots of gorgeous, beautiful women um, in fierce wheelchairs, and I love it. But me, as a walker user, and have and I have cerebral palsy, I'd like to see more people with walkers and different mobility devices being represented, because we're not all in a wheelchair. Well, I totally agree with you. But if you think about it, if you think about back in the day, there was no way they could know who we were like who disability people were, but now there's social media where you can see like all these influencers with yes. disabilities out there. So it's like, oh wow, this person doing this stuff, so we should like pull that out, bring that into the, the spotlight so other people can see that they are doing stuff. That's what I think. I think that at least when I think of myself as a disability influencer, I hope that through the work that I do and uh, in collaboration with Aaron, with our company and, and projects like this, that we are influencing social change, of course, yada, yada, all of that, but um, sharing of ourselves so that other women, other people with disabilities know that they are not alone. Well, two are, I'm, I'm going to put my, our two beauty queens here on the spot. Um, when you all won your titles, did just quickly answer, answering the question, it can be a yes or no answer, but did you feel like you wanted to go and uh, appear in places that were only disabled young women or anybody, so, that, so everybody could see you? Um, for me, it was a little bit of both. Um, I'm more of starting the social conversation, getting the discourse going. So for me, I did a lot more outreach with people who were not disabled because I felt, I felt as if um, those people needed to get a wake up call, if you know what I mean. Um, yes. I wanted to start, I wanted to shift perspectives. Um, and I did meet with a lot of people with disabilities because I wanted to encourage and empower not on a wide scale because I feel like I wasn't given that media attention that, for example, Miss New York got, you know, like it was kind of just within the disabled community that, that, um, that it was highlighted. And when you look at how, you know, Miss New York or Miss whomever, Connecticut Miss Universe, when those people win titles, it is like a big media sensation. I wanted to reach out to people in the disability community and people who didn't have disabilities just because in the disability community, I wanted to like show people um, that we can be beauty queens or we have something to offer. And then um, people without disabilities, like um, we are capable of achieving um, whatever we want to achieve. And it is kind of um, a balance, I guess I would say, because um, just like um, Mindy said, um, I guess people with um, like Miss New York and Miss Universe, they get uh, more representation than we do. And it's not fair, but it's the truth. Um, and that's just something that needs to be worked on. Primarily society tells us that we're not sexy 
or we shouldn't be allowed to feel sexy. So um, I just, I hope there's a change in momentum. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight, but it will slowly and I am looking forward to that. The general public is not yet comfortable of seeing someone in a wheelchair, or walker, crutches, and I, I think that's my opinion. Um, so I'm like wearing a sexy laundry because they have that mindset saying, okay, disability, um, it's ugly. No one wants to see it. Yeah. And then they don't want their, their sexy laundry rep being represented by one of us. A lot of people had to break the stereotype of, you know, that disability is not beautiful, but it is mm -hmm. because it's what they were conditioned for quite some time. Yes. Because my personal um, experience, I'm like, it took me a while to love myself and how I was born. Because one, I did not see anyone in my condition or crutches, wheelchair, you name it. Um, now that I'm seeing it, I'm like, yes, this is this is gonna happen one day. Yeah. I'm loving it. I'm, I want to be part of this. So mm -hmm. hopefully, wow. years from now, who knows? You know, I, we need to break people with disabilities down to we're just we're just human people. I mean, there's this complex that we're like childlike, like Molly's saying, and we're perfect or we're angels or, you know, I think it's hard for people to see us in a sexy way because of that infantizing. Right. And, you know, it's okay to think a disabled woman is hot as heck. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is a good way, good way to close us out. Absolutely. <laughs>